All right, so here we go with part two for the river romance. In this video, I'll go over his romance quest called Follow the River. If it were up to me, I would have called it Go with the Flow because it sounds like a better pun, but that's just me. A few days after the events of the hunt, you'll get a call from River. Apparently, he typically sends you a text first, but for some reason, I never got it in my game. There's no doom and gloom this time, just River asking if you'd stop by for dinner. Does this mean we're going to have a real date? Hey, v. you've been feeling all right, I hope? Of course. Why? What's up? Just calling to invite you to Joss's for dinner. I'd love it if you swung by. What do you say? Here I feared you'd forgotten about me. About you? Oh, come on, never. Just been swamped. Randy's still in the hospital. Someone has to keep an eye on the kids when Joss visits him. Relax. Don't need to explain. Right. So, gonna stop by or gonna make me grovel? Be great to see all you guys. Prime. <laughs> Joss will be thrilled. Sounds great. I've missed you, you know. <laughs> Actually, miss you too. I'll see you at Joss's. I'll see you at Joss's. Perfect. Till then. Then. I love the fluff dialogue that you can pick saying, here, I thought you'd forgotten about me. He tells you a little bit about how busy he's been and also asks if you're going to make him grovel, which of course is always fun. <laughs> What's really sweet though is how he says he's missed you. It comes off slightly awkward, but River doesn't strike me as the type of guy who is trying to pick up women very often, so I'll allow it. I've got to say, I really like the sweet tone my V has at this point where she says she's missed him too. Not a very common sound for her, that's for sure. And with that, you you can head over to Joss's place and wait for the quest to start. Let's take a look how it goes. Oh, hey! Hi! Hey, how's it going? Over here! Glad you're here. I need your help cooking. What's on the menu? Jambalaya. Come on. You can stir the meat? Uh, soy meat. Okay. This an ancient ward family secret? Uh-huh. Onions, paprika, thyme. Just need to mince some celery and garlic. But you stir, please. Stir. I'm stirring, I'm stirring. Bet my socks you've never had better jambalaya. Honestly? Thought you were kidding about the cook-off. Or that Joss had sweat away in the kitchen while... Oh. Joss doesn't know the first thing about cooking. Actually, I like to torture foodstuffs. <laughs> Haven't had many opportunities lately. Somehow look different than usual today. Is that so? Yeah. Different meaning... normal. <laughs> As if you got a good night's sleep. Hmm. Well... Wanted you to see this side of me, too. How's Randy holding up? He's looking for his old self. Physically, though, it'll be a long road before he's back to full health. And mentally? That was some experience. What Harris did to him, fucked as this might sound, might have helped the kid. Could be wrong, but... Feels like a clean break for him. Don't mean to spoil a nice day, but... I gotta ask. What about Peter Pan? You're asking if I killed him. We'll talk later, okay? Sure. No pressure. It's just I... You know. I know. All right. Think you've stirred enough? Mind grabbing the rice from the kitchen? Yes, sir. No, Randy's always been that way. But I'm sure this didn't help none. 
You know, his father was a difficult man, too. That's exactly what I told Um, where will I find the rice? I'll call you back later. Basmati, nice. Tomatoes in next. Now you can toss in the rice. Rice is in. Okay, now this has to bubble and brew. Patio. So right off the bat, I've got to say there is a cute vibe with the kids as Monique runs up to say hi to you. And then River calls out saying he needs help cooking. He's making jambalaya with soy meat, which just sounds kind of gross to me personally. And this element of the quest was kind of funny though. I kept feeling like I had to stir the pot the entire time. Although I also kind of wonder now if it's possible to burn the jambalaya if you don't stir it. Hmm. V asks if this is an old ward family recipe and he confirms it sounding very confident in his cooking skills. I love a man who can cook and so I was pretty impressed with the whole thing. Even funnier is that apparently his sister Joss can't cook well at all, making him more the homebody than her. You can talk about how taking it easy and relaxing looks good on him, as if he were actually doing something normal for once instead of hunting down creeps. I liked his response a lot too, with him saying that he wanted her to see him as a regular person. It would definitely be nice to know that he could relax and wasn't always obsessing over a case. In more conversation, you can ask about how Randy's doing and he tells you that he's in bad shape physically and that it will be a while before he recovers. What was really interesting though is that he also adds that what happened to him might have actually helped him to snap out of his funk. I guess that happens sometimes and forces people to look at life with a new set of lenses. It's nice to see something good came of that whole mess at least. With all of the side chatter satisfied, V can't help but ask about Peter Pan. Did River actually kill him? He doesn't seem to want to answer at the moment and there's an awkward exchange where V isn't sure what to say. After the silence, River changes the subject, getting back to the food and asks you to go get him some rice from inside the house. Joss is in there talking on the phone about Randy and you can say something to her, but the dialogue doesn't seem to work right. She will say she has to go if you talk to her, but then she'll just stop talking and never say anything to you. Kind of annoying because I would have liked to hear some special dialogue from her here. Next, we get to finish our session of Cooking Mama <laughs> by adding the rice to the pot. Since the food's going to take a while to finish cooking, River asks you to join him on the patio. And this is where things get a little heavy as River tells you what happened with Harris. Grab a chair and a beer or something else. It's nice out here. Yeah, seems all good. Like nothing bad ever happened. Tell me now about Harris. I paid him a visit at the hospital. You flatline him? I wasn't sure that was what I really wanted. One shot to the head. Quick and clean. I had the same thought. It would be so easy. I pressed the gun to his head and remembered something. River. Well, my parents died. Now, you sure you want to hear this? What happened? Old man had a farm like Harris's dad. But when business took a turn, well... My parents managed to open a small grocery. We lived on the floor above. A loud noise woke us one night. They wanted cash. Register was empty, so they stormed upstairs, forced us all to kneel, and demanded my dad tell him where he hid the money. Mostly, I remember my ma crying. My dad swore they'd found all we had. One was gassed out of his mind. He fired first. Blew half my dad's skull off. Jesus. River. I'm sorry. He was erratic. Went rabid. 
handed me his gun and ordered me to aim it at my mom's head. I can still see her tear-filled eyes at the end of that barrel to this day. What did you do? Nothing. I stood frozen. Finally, he just snatched the gun back. Shot my mother and they left. Police never caught him. That was why I joined the force. I couldn't agree with scum like that roaming free. No one to hunt him. Was Joss there too? Saw all this? Mm hmm. I think when she looks at me, she still sees that boy holding a gun to her mom's head. I can't tell you how sorry I am. So when I stood over Harris in that hospital bed, barreled to his brow, I was that kid again. But I was also the junkie who shot my parents. I understand. I've ended a few lives in my time. But never like that. Never an execution. Slipped out of the hospital quick. Told myself the case was closed. That's good. But when now? You're not going back to the PD? PI has a nice ring to it. Who knows? I think the story he relates here is incredibly personal and it makes sense why he wanted to put it off now. Here he is just wanting to have a nice date and make dinner for you, but there is still the unfortunate mess of Harris and what happened to him looming over his head. He tells you that he did in fact visit the man at the hospital and he pressed the gun against Harris's head. It made him remember the death of his parents when he did it though. And while I understand not wanting to put someone through any additional trauma, I can't imagine that your V would be like, you know what, I don't wanna hear about this. There are several options to have him not finish the story and it's just kind of strange. I wonder why they keep giving you the option. How could you not let him tell you what happened, especially considering he's the one who brought it up in the first place? But back to the story about his parents. His recollection of the robbery is awful. It sounds incredibly tragic. The thought of seeing your dad's head blown off as a kid, I can't even comprehend what that would do to you. Then one of the robbers hands the gun to River and tells him to shoot his own mother. Imagine the memory for everyone involved, for River, for Joss even. And even as he tried to kill Harris, that same mental image came back to him and he just couldn't do it. I mean, could you blame him? He never actually shot his mother, but the perp took the gun back and finished the job for him. This ends up being the main reason he becomes a cop, to punish people like the ones that killed his parents. It makes total sense to me. When he tried to shoot Harris, it was basically like he had become the thing that he hated most and wasn't able to do it. He considers it a closed case and washes his hands clean of it. I think that ultimately it was a good choice for River not to kill Harris. I mean, the guy was a creep, but in a way he already got his retribution. He's stuck in a coma and not likely to come back to any normal state of living. If he does, he'll most definitely be convicted and put in jail. On the other hand, if River had killed him, well, that burden would be on River's shoulders. And as a morally good person, I don't know that it would have sat well with him over the years. And if God forbid he was caught, then he wouldn't be there for his family. In the end, he decides that he wants to become a private investigator and not return to the police force, which given all of the corruption there is probably not a bad idea. The moment is starting to look up, but it's still pretty heavy. Thankfully, the kids lighten the mood by running up and reminding River that he said he'd play a game with them. This is probably one of my favorite parts here. I'm going to play the whole thing so you guys can see it. You said you'd play with us. You promised. All right, all right. Let's go. Me? Join us? What are we gonna play, Uncle River? You'll see. Dorian, we're playing! Yeah, big trouble in Haywood. Grab your set. think? Always wanted to try a game like this. Well, well. Nice firepower there. 
This is no time to get distracted. We can't let that filth get away. Who? Oh, well, look at you. V, allow me to introduce Captain Joan McLean and Lieutenant Henry Callahan. They're our precinct's best and brightest. Wouldn't want to get in their way. I always work alone. No exceptions. Even for you. Yeah, me too. Got a crash course? Anything I ought to know? The entire city is sick with crime and corruption. Lawlessness rules the streets. And we're no saints either. Even the police are haunted by the sins of their past. But the city's without hope. No one else would ever dare face El Chamuco and Diablado. Oh, he's the worst. But I know we can beat him. The city's most evilest mastermind ever. All right, let's get to it. Right. All we gotta do is track down El Chamuco and Diablado and take out his lackeys along the way. He'll pay for his crimes. We'll play like two teams, us and the kids, but we work toward the same objective. The team with the best result wins. You don't stand a chance. Avi, hey, just go easy, okay? It's their favorite game. Sure. from me. <laughs> He's fast, but not fast enough to escape justice. <gasps> Watch out! Done yet. Not half bad. Okay, I think we got them all. But it's not over yet. Some last words. Fine. Out with it, scumbag. I want to see you squirm. No. Your last words. <laughs> Okay, so now... Lunch is ready. Uh, but, Mom, you almost had him. Oh, you'll get him next time. At least we beat the grown-ups. We're the best! Thanks, 
for letting them win. They had fun. No, <laughs> they're great kids. It's no problem. Seems they took a liking to you, too. Hey, food's on the table. How awesome was that? I mean, really, I love that the kids are full-sized adults in this sort of altered reality game that they play. I love the voices they use and the things they say. The entire city is sick with crime and corruption. I even love how River tells you to take it easy on them and let them win because they're kids, and yet it's actually pretty hard to beat the kids. Green said I'm no speed shooter, and I was trying to let them win most of the time, but there were some times where I actually tried to hit a target, and they had both gotten a shot off right as I hit my first. Then other times, they wouldn't hit it even if I gave them time to. The whole thing is really adorable, and it's great to see that River has reincorporated into his family so well. It's pretty awesome that they went through so much trouble for this scene, too. Setting all of the targets, and even the game itself with the cute little orange pistols, it kind of makes me feel like I'm playing Virtua Cop 2 at the arcade or something. It totally cracks me up when they run into the dude who's just sitting in the chair chilling. He's even a good sport about it and is like, man, I'm just passing through. <laughs> I also giggled at the donut joke one of the kids throws at River. <laughs> Too Too many donuts. As you approach the last boss, you are completely surrounded by targets. And just as you're thinking, oh man, this is going to be tough, the real last boss appears and it's their mom saying that dinner is ready. But mom... <laughs> And the kids are happy they beat the grown-ups, and River is happy that you went along and letting them win. It's win-win. At this point, it's pretty cool that you're starting to feel a little bit like part of the family. And it's a bit of a strange feeling considering all of the crazy stuff that's going on in V's life at the moment. I mean, the impending doom and all, but why not feel like a little normal too, right? I mean, it can't hurt anything. Was your game fun? Awesome! <laughs> we kicked their big butts! The bad guys... Too. Time to see if this tastes as good as it smells. Unemployment's being good to you. You seem good. River's discovering the joys of family life. That and police duty. Never a good mix. This here's a way to get some of those years back. I haven't seen him this... untroubled in a while. What about you, V? You got a family? Or just relations? If the future allows it, I'd like to have one someday. If for no other reason than that I love get-togethers like this. Well, you brought my family back to me, and I'm grateful. If you say so, Joss. And my brother likes you. Joss? Well, why hide it? Probably asked you to say that himself, didn't he? Wow. How did she know? Come on, Joss. You don't see wedding bells in my future, surely? Why not? Who thinks me and Uncle River make a good couple? <laughs> I do. <laughs> v just voted. Well, that's decided. Got an 1199. Officer needs backup. Come on, pull you out of this ambush. Thanks, Joss. Yeah, thanks. Whew, situation was getting dicey. That's what partners are for. You were about a hair's breadth away from having to look at photo albums. I love that as you sit down to eat, Joss is a little mischievous, throwing hints about how River is coming to appreciate family life. It doesn't stop there though, as she starts prying into your personal life, trying to figure out if River has a chance with you. Got a family? A special someone, she's asking? My brother likes you. <laughs> River is just like, Joss, and I can't help but feel like we're all little kids or something. You can call her on it, asking if she's out to set you guys up, and she's basically like, 
Yeah, why not? And then the kids kick in and ask, who thinks they make a good couple? And I am just like, oh man, this is awkward and we are getting railroaded here. <laughs> River is not having any of it and is like, okay, let's get out of here. I am in agreement with him as everyone pushing and prying is cute, but woo, it's a bit much. There is some great dialogue as you walk away with him here. I love the line about potentially having to look at photo albums but I mean if it were me in real life I would have been like show me the photo albums I want to see all the baby pics <laughs> this a romantic stroll by chance not about to pick you flowers if that's what you're asking here we are what are we looking at a water tower great spot great for what for you know the views the views Right. This way. I oh, fuck. Gate stuck again. Gonna fix it one of these days. Let me give you a boost. Climb over, open it from the other side. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just push. Seem okay. On our way. Area's not bad, actually. Unlikely to dazzle. Make a good first impression, though. Certainly no Corpo Plaza. No. But life's livable here. No worse places to raise kids. Randy's problems with the law. Those didn't pop out of thin air. True. But Randy takes after his old man. He'd find trouble in a nicer neighborhood, too. <whistles> Apparently the worst city between the Atlantic and the Pacific. But I sure do love this view. Find it calming. So River brings you to a water tower and I can't help but think of Final Fantasy VII because of that scene with Cloud and Tifa. Oof. Back on point though, V is wondering, so what are we going to do up there? And he's saying it's a great spot for the view. Sure, River. We're all seeing right through you here. And it's cool when River helps you jump the fence. It adds a little bit of intimacy to the moment and reminds me a lot of the trouble I used to get into as a kid. Sneaking into places we shouldn't have been. In fact, a lot of this romance reminds me of being a teenager. It just has that kind of young and innocent vibe to it. A youthful playfulness almost. He comes back to talking about kids again as you're climbing the ladder to the top and how raising kids outside of the city is a lot better than in it. I like that V calls him on it and mentions how Randy still had problems and even how River Replies works too about how some people can find trouble anywhere. And that's certainly the truth. Some of the worst kids I knew growing up were from the most affluent neighborhoods. And it's funny how this whole romance has got me thinking about the past, huh? I wonder if it's the same for all of you guys. Or maybe it's just because I used to be out and about a lot as a teenager and I have so many memories of places like this. I just used to love climbing on things and I remember hanging out underneath a highway bridge. It ran over a huge river and I'd actually climb down to one of the concrete supports. It's crazy to think that I used to do this so often, but I just liked places like that. Getting as far away from the noise of everything else as I could. If I had a water tower like this, I definitely would have been going up there. What makes this water tower even better though is that it actually has a view. Man, I would have killed for that. Used to die for. Great spot indeed. Told you. Got something for you. Wow. What's the occasion? Aiming to close the door. A stage of my life is done. This thing holds too many memories. Won't let me do that. It'll serve you better. Thank you. Just promise you won't blow your foot off. Oddly specific request. 
Josh's husband did it. Drunk. This very spot. Which made this your special spot. Family landmark? Something of the kind. All right, V. You know why we're here, don't you? Say you do. Please, don't string me along. Ever feel alone? Of course I do. But doubt I'm cut out for relationships. <laughs> I doubt you know who you're talking to. Me? I'm a master of disastrous relationships. I'll need some evidence. Was only ever in love once. I was a shithead. Well, he was... He was great. But... Well, he had... Quirks. Between the sheets, I mean. Found that out later. Couldn't get hard without a mask on. And not the Venetian carnival kind, but U.S. presidents. A closet full. The hell? Had to dump him. But only fuck Honest Abe so many times. <laughs> I don't, you made that up. No, I didn't no, no, seriously. Smash one relationship to pieces, along with the fucker's jaw. Why? What'd he do? Said I was too aggressive for him. Kidding. He had a side bitch. Caught him fucking between the sheets I'd bought. Poof. Classic. Booked a skydiving experience for this one guy I was dating. And he never came back. Oh, V. I'm sorry. I know what it means when somebody close dies. Dies? No. No, no, no. Just fallen out of that plane, he fell in love with his instructor. Nice story. But it don't beat my last serious liaison. What did you do? I shot her. Shut up. Had no choice. Found ourselves standing on opposite sides of the law. But don't worry. Never made it a habit. I'm done shooting the women I date. I see what you're doing, River. And how am I doing? Do I stand a chance? Just don't fall in love with me. Too late, V. Too late. Now you know things are about to go down as you approach River to sit beside him. I awkwardly couldn't figure out where to sit and I was like, man, what the heck? Till I realized you're supposed to sit to his right and not his left. So what's really cool is that River gives you his gun here. For him, it's like letting a chapter of his life close. I couldn't help but feel like, hey, aren't you still gonna need a gun for protection? But maybe he's planning to buy a new one that doesn't have so many memories attached to it. It's really cool to have a gun that's his though. It's a nice touch and something tangible that you can use in the game. Just as I wondered if he was ever going to get down to it with V, he just lets you have it. You know why we're here, he says. And then you get to tell him about all of your bad relationships, which while funny was a little off-putting. I mean, I know personally, I don't like to hear much about exes. When you get to the point where you've been together for a while, it's not such a big deal. But right at the beginning, right when you think you're going to kiss, nah. And some of these stories are pretty rough, like breaking a guy's jaw. If I were River, I might be scared. I'm just saying. But ultimately, most of these stories are kind of sad. Like the guy who couldn't get going without wearing a mask of a US president. Like, just wow. Or the guy who cheated on her with his skydiving instructor. It's just not how you want to portray yourself to a possible suitor. I mean, at least I wouldn't want to portray myself that way. I get it. You're supposed to be reminiscing about these messed up relationships you've had to make River feel better about not being cut out to date someone. But where's his story? Well, I mean, there is one. But while it's messed up, I mean, he shot her. It doesn't sound like the same sort of messed up thing V was dealing with. All in all, this scene feels a little awkward at the moment. I don't feel like any of this is romantic, you know? I like getting away to the water tower. I don't even mind him talking about kids, but exes? Eh. And bad ex stories? Eh. 
kind of hitting my cold meter here. Finally, finally, the subject is brought back to front and center as River asks how he's doing. Do I stand a chance, he asks. What he doesn't get is that V wouldn't be sitting here on this water tower with him if he didn't stand a chance. But man, he's almost lost her with all that X talk. <laughs> I personally wouldn't have told him not to fall in love myself, but I understand it given the circumstances with the relic and all. I do have to say, I love how he says it's too late. I was like, eh. And you got me back again. <laughs> Finally, you kiss. And I have to say, it's kind of cool that you close your eyes during the kiss. At first, I'm thinking, why can't I see anything? And then I realize, wait a second. It's not like you sit there and stare at your partner when you kiss. This actually feels kind of realistic. And it's weird kissing someone in first person in a game, huh? Okay, now it's time for the main event. Although, sadly, I'm not sure how much of it I'm even going to be able to show. There is only one part where there's any kind of real nudity. But the connotation is still there. Like, you know what's happening. But who knows what YouTube is going to accept here. It always feels like I'm taking shots in the dark. Whoa, damn. So first, the music, I love it. I love the scene when you're walking back from the water tower, hanging all over each other, kissing and shoving them against the wall. Some people show up and are like, hey, what are you guys doing? And so River is thinking it's best to just take you back to his home. But wait, there's kids sleeping? Oh no, this is starting to feel more and more like real life. No, go back to the water tower. Still, you tiptoe past the kiddos and make it to River's room all the while freaking out over every single sound you make. Yep, definitely too much like real life. But V is a trooper, a mad woman, and she is like, get your ass down on that desk, River. But she's knocking bottles over and you guys are like, oh no, not the bottle. Screw that bottle, you guys get to it. Someone coughs in the background and then you hear snoring and suddenly I'm back at the campgrounds in Baldur's Gate 3. All we need now is for Astarian to be meditating right beside us and it will be just like home. <laughs> V gets over to the bed and while River is doing something with the door, I really have no idea what the heck he was doing. It was like, honey, what the hell are you doing? Now is not the time. I guess he was checking to see if anyone was awake and coming. Either way, V is not wasting this opportunity and in a display of absolute wizardry, she somehow manages to completely disrobe in the span of a second and is just waiting on the bed for him like a cat on the prowl. It's great how River pauses like, oh damn. I wasn't expecting that. But then he's liking the idea as V reaches out to grab his hand and jump his bones. One of the little peeves I have here though is the disrobing. In a flash, River goes from wearing a shirt to not wearing a shirt. I get it, it's sort of like speeding ahead, what we know is going to happen, but it also feels a little clunky. Same thing with V, how she isn't actually taking her pants off, she's just suddenly gotten them off. River is still worried about all the sounds and V is grabbing his chin like, nope, enough of that, you. I am totally digging how V is in this scene, by the way. I I appreciate her aggressive nature and feel like it matches the character very well. She's covering his mouth like, don't make any noise or you're going to wake everyone up and he's having a hard time managing. I also have to say I love that River takes some initiative here and picks her up and brings her over to the window because hot open window sex is not something I think a lot of people have experienced. I know I haven't because I'd be too scared someone would see. Personally, I like to see things in games that would be a lot less likely to happen in real life. It just makes it more exciting, you know? There is a lot of moaning as the scene continues and in what feels kind of like an anticlimactic ending, River just slips off to the side and is done? Not even a climax? I mean, it's a little disappointing. I guess they were trying to be quiet, but still, maybe that's the point where she could have been covering his mouth again. I was happy to see that there was a really good day after scene as well though. Let me show you real quick.
Christ, V. Can't believe you're making me fuck a cop. Gonna go plug my ears, gouge out my eyes. Hey. Hey? Coffee will be ready in a jiff. <sighs> oh, Prem. Talked in your sleep, you know? Yeah? I dreamt of a warehouse, searching containers in it. Warehouse must have been huge. <laughs> you were loud. Taste it. Best coffee you've ever had, I bet. Best jambalaya, best coffee. Mm-hmm. Come on, keep it coming, and... Just that. So, I've been thinking. What? Last night, you and me. Is this going anywhere, you know, longer term? Uh, heavy combos first thing in the morning. Please just answer me. I'd like to know where I stand. This works, River. I like being around you. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. But if it doesn't work, we'll still be friends, right? Let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? Sure. Yeah. Good morning. Not intruding, I hope. The generator? You remember, right? Oh, fuck. Need me to fix it now? Yeah. Now. Then we go to the hospital. I'd rather have everything ready for when Randy gets back. Don't mind me. And tell Randy I said hello. Oh, damn. Oh, sorry, V. Will I see you later? Yeah, sure. Have a good day, then. <laughs> it cracked me up when Johnny shows up and is like, I can't believe you're making me bang a cop. <laughs> He must love that. So River's making you coffee and there is an exchange about the best jambalaya and the best coffee. And as River prods her to go further and call him the best lover, she is a brat and just says, nope, just that. I would have liked her to go along with the joke personally, but I guess she wants to play it tight to the vest. I like that he is trying to see if the relationship between you guys is going somewhere. It shows that he is really interested in something more than a fling, which honestly, I'd have to be deaf and dumb to have missed along the way with all the talk of family and kids. So maybe it feels like they beat you over the head with it a lot, but... I can appreciate him wanting to know where he stands. My V reassured him and said that they should give it a try. Joss comes in and says she hopes she's not intruding, but then intrudes and asks River to go fix the generator. She gets really fussy about wanting him to do it now and then go to the hospital so that everything is ready for Randy. While that day after started well, I feel like it ended in kind of a lame way. He basically apologizes and heads out to fix the generator. You can follow them outside and watch him poke around at the generator while Joss stands off to the side smoking and you can ask her questions if you want to and take a look at the gun that River gave you that's called Crash. It's a power revolver with a lot of mod slots in it. What's even better is that if you go poking around in River's computer you can find a file that is a recipe for jambalaya. It reads, if you're a stranger to the kitchen this is a great first dish to make. I think this touch brought a lot more sentimentality to the romance than a lot of the other things did. Maybe it's just the type of person I am, but it says a lot to me when someone goes out of their way to try and do something nice for me, and especially something they might not have been good at and had to learn just to please you. It also made me giggle thinking about how he said it was an old family recipe, just one of those moments where you smile and nod and maybe blush a little. Eventually, you get a text from River where he basically says he realized there's a lot more space at his place than he needs, and he says you can keep stuff at his house. I thought this sounded pretty awesome, and so I went back to his place right away. I found him sitting on the front steps, and there was some new dialogue available. But when I went into his room, I expected a stash, and there was nothing. Help me out, guys. Am I missing something? I searched high and low, and I never found a thing. 
Later still, you will get another text from River talking about how he's glad you stopped by and how he misses you. V, a girl after my own heart, says that they should do it again, especially the second half of the evening. <laughs> it's also pretty cute, the line he says about being dumb happy. He certainly sounds pretty smitten, and I can't deny that I liked how he acted a lot. You even get a couple texts from Joss, who says she'd be happy to welcome you to their family, and even sends you a text to let you know that Randy is doing well. It says she attached a picture, but unfortunately it's not showing up for me. It kind of sucks because it would have been a really nice touch, and I was curious about how he was doing. So far in my game, I haven't run into him at their house once, so it would have been cool to see an in-person update. And that about covers everything except for the endgame dialogue. When you're sitting up on the roof above Misty's, you have a chance to call him, and then there is different dialogue for most of the endings. I'm probably going to put that into another video though, since it's going to take me a little time to get all the endings and actually see all of the different dialogue. So, concluding thoughts on the romance. I've already said a lot about what I liked about River, but I'll reiterate. I like that he is a very family-oriented man and that he's honest, sincere, and a good person. I even like how he comes off a little dorky sometimes. These are all the endearing qualities, but you know, there are definitely some things that detracted away from the romance too, and I'm going to have to get into that as well. So, the first thing is that this romance comes off as a little mundane. Why? Because it's so typically something that you'd run into in real life. I'm sure all of you have dated that guy who lived with his parents or the one who didn't have his own car and you had to drive him around everywhere. It got to a point where I was younger that I had to put my feet down and say any guy I date has got to have these three things, a job, a car, and his own place. Wouldn't you know it, the next guy I met had these things and we ended up getting married. <laughs> so when I see this romance, I can't help but think, it's too close to real life. A guy living at his sister's place helping to watch her kids, as crappy as it sounds of me, it's not really what I would go for. It makes me wonder where he was living before this or why they didn't mention that he lost his place once he quit his job to go into the private sector. And I mean, literally, the day after you first make love, Joss is already pulling him away to fix something and it's just given me this kind of meh taste in my mouth. Like, is this gonna happen a lot? It almost feels like dating someone who's divorced with kids but still lives with his ex and still has to take care of his family. I know lots of people get into romantic situations like that, at least with people who are no longer living together, I'd hope. But I think I would have a lot of trouble with that myself. It would be a difficult situation compared to what would be much easier if both of you were just unattached. This is why I tend to like romances that are kind of far-fetched and crazy in games. I personally like to experience things I either never have or never would be able to do in real life. That's what makes it so fun and exciting, you know? I mean, think about it. I love the impossibly smooth vampire from Baldur's Gate 3 because he is impossible. No way you're ever going to meet someone that's smooth in real life. And if you did, he'd probably be the type to leave you the next morning and you'd never hear from him again. And oh yeah, he's a vampire. I mean, that's kind of hot in and of itself. River is is like the total real dude and part of me likes that but also thinks hey you know I have my husband in real life who is a total real dude and I like him more than River you know it's hard to explain I'm not trying to beat on this guy but if I had to say why the magic wasn't there for me a hundred percent that's a big part of it the rest is just little complaints like Joss being bossy with him and him coming off as almost a little clingy talking about kids and talking about exes this is why I called him the family man because that is what I think of first when it comes to him now if you're a single girl and you want a family but don't have one yet, then you're probably going to like it a whole lot more. In my case, I already have a family, I already know what it's like, and most days I don't want to be reminded of my screaming children. I mean, I love them, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of crying. It doesn't make me think, oh yeah, that's hot. <laughs> I've also got to say, the apartment is a really cool idea, but what's the point? I can't leave my items there like you can at your own apartment. There's no stash. And after the initial dialogue, it doesn't seem like there's anything else. I feel like it would have been awesome if they added a simple choice to talk to him and spend the night with him again. How cool would it have been if they had added in a few simple scenes like falling asleep watching TV or getting takeout? Nothing that would have to be a huge amount of work like the date quest was, but just something simple with basic dialogue. What would have been really amazing 
would be the option to actually bring them along with you as a companion like Fallout 4 did. And when I started playing this game, I thought that was going to be the case. So it was disappointing to see that it never happens except for quests that you actually do together. It really feels like such a huge culmination of events just to drop the romance on its head as though it just doesn't matter anymore. It feels kind of empty and pointless after you're done, and that kind of sucks. I know this happens a lot in games, but I think the lack of interaction really exacerbates it. If you could take River along with you during your forays into Night City, it wouldn't feel like such a cutoff, you know? I have already talked with some of you about River in the comments of my last video, but I'm wondering what everyone else is thinking. Was this a good romance for you? I'd have to say at the end of the day, I think it was handled very well, but they really needed to allow you something after the fact. I have read that there was a whole ending with Pan Am, one of the male romance options, and that leaves me feeling just a little jilted. Then don't even get me started on the lack of availability to romance the guy I really wanted, Takamura. I mean, that's going to be another video in and of itself because, well, yeah, it's going to be a lot of ranting. Well, let me hear your thoughts in the comments below. And oh yeah, I finally got around to setting up my Patreon page. So if you guys want to join my community, the link is in the info section below. There will be a lot of fun perks available there and most importantly, uncensored content for all of that extra raunch, yay. Plus you see this fancy spot here and just because I know it's what you've always wanted, your name could go here in this empty space. Look, there's nobody there right now. That's really sad. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.